Good evening. In today's spooky Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving a classic result from geometry that I can't believe we haven't gone over already, a proof of the isosceles triangle theorem. Recall that an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has at least two sides congruent to each other. So for this triangle here, side AC is congruent to side AB better go ahead and write that on the board. So that's what an isosceles triangle is, a triangle with at least two congruent sides. And again, here, our side AC is congruent to side AB, which we can write like that. And we might denote that on our triangle by putting a little hash mark on the congruent sides. Of course, an equilateral triangle, where all three sides are congruent, that's just a special type of isosceles triangle. Again, in an isosceles triangle, we just have to have at least two congruent sides. So the isosceles triangle theorem tells us that in such a triangle, the angles opposite the congruent sides will also be congruent. So in this case, uh, the sides AC and AB are congruent. B is the angle opposite this side. C is the angle opposite this side. So we're trying to prove that angle C is congruent to angle B. Very useful theorem and a pretty easy proof. So let's go ahead and get into it. Of course, I just clipped my glove into this marker. Of course, it's often the case that when we want to prove segments where angles are congruent, we want to do that by proving that two triangles are congruent. In this case, we've only got one triangle, so what could we do to construct two useful triangles? Well, we want to show that angle C is congruent to angle B. So, of course, we want them to be in different triangles, so that when we prove that the two triangles are congruent, we'll have these as corresponding angles between the congruent triangles, and thus they'll be congruent. So, we'd like to try drawing some segment or ray from the vertex or angle A. We want a useful one, so let's draw the angle bisector of angle A. That would be a nice thing to draw. So that's a ray that looks something like that. That's the angle bisector of angle A. Thus, by definition, this angle, CAD, we'll say that this point here is D. CAD is congruent to angle BAD because this is an angle bisector. So we're, of course, assuming that this point that this angle bisector intersects CB at, we're calling that point D. For a lot of you, you'll just take for granted in your typical geometry class that this ray does intersect this side, but it's actually a result of what's often called the crossbar theorem. So if you're interested in that, check it out. That's how we know this angle bisector intersects this side CB, and we're going to call that point of intersection D. So now we've got these two triangles, triangle ADC, triangle ADC, and we want to show that it's congruent to triangle ADB, show that it's congruent to ADB. And if we can do that, we will have proven that their corresponding angles, C and B, are also congruent just as we want. So, are these two triangles congruent? How can we conclude that they are? Turns out it's very easy. It's just a result of the side angle side triangle congruence postulate. Because, look, side AC we already know is congruent to side AB, so there's one side down. Are there any other congruent sides between these two triangles? Well, yes, the side AD, that's a side of both triangles, AD, AD. And AD, of course, is congruent to itself, which we might decide to write. AD is congruent to AD. Thus, all we need to finish the side angle side congruency is to show that the included angles between these two sides, angle CAD and angle BAD, are both congruent. And we already know that because this ray, AD, was defined to be an angle bisector. So we already know those two angles are congruent. We'll write that here, angle CAD. Angle CAD we already know is congruent to angle BAD. Accidentally just erased a little bit of the triangle. And again, that's because this ray is an angle bisector. So this is half of angle A, and this is half of angle A. And that's it. We've got these pairs of congruent sides. Those two, their included angles are also congruent. So by side angle side, we have our desired 
triangle congruence. Triangle A ADC, that one there, is congruent to triangle ADB. Thus, since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we have our desired result that angle C is congruent to angle B. We'll write that here. Angle C is congruent to angle B because these triangles are congruent and these are corresponding angles in those congruent triangles. And so that's it. That's how you prove that in an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite the congruent sides are also congruent. And it turns out the converse of this theorem is true as well. So if we just knew that angle C was congruent to angle B, we would be able to show that these two sides are congruent and thus the triangle is isosceles, but we'll leave that for another time. For now, I hope this video helped you understand how to prove the isosceles triangle theorem. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the spookiest map lessons on the internet.